popping out on set tomorrow. Uh, quick change though, instead of sound mixer, we're actually going to need you to as boom operator. Sorry for the last minute change, but I'll see you soon. On today's episode of Sound 101, we're going to learn to be a boom operator. It is safe to say I haven't been on set in a couple of years and I am very rusty, so I am happy to have Sarah come in and save me. Thank you so much. My pleasure, you're welcome. So tell the audience a little bit about what is your background in booming? Oh, well, I've been doing production sound since 2003. There's a mixer and there's a utility, but everything I ever worked on as a utility, I was the second boom, booming on everything. So the last three shows that I worked on was Cameron Crowe's Roadies, Ryan Murphy's Feud, and then Westworld. Well, I mean, I think it's safe to say you know what you're talking about. Now, here's the big question though. What exactly does a boom operator do on set? They're the representative for the sound department on set. So everybody's gonna go to them. First AD's gonna go to them when they need, the director's gonna go to them. They're gonna interface with the DP, the camera operators, the gaffer, the key grips. You know, they watch the rehearsals, they break it down, decide if you need a second pole out there. And, and as the representative on set, you know, when people walk on set and they figure like, who do I talk to if I need something for sound? They're either gonna go to the boom op or the utility. And then okay. they're gonna come back to the mixer. So why do we need, though, a boom operator? I mean, we have lobs. Not that they're not good, but they don't sound like the boom. They're not the same. No. They kind of put you right here. And that's great when you're in a noisy environment. It's great when you're shooting something super wide and uh, you can't get a boom in there. Because at the end of the day, we're all there for performance. The performance is more than just the mouth. It is also the hand, the touching, it's the sound the of the world. the nuances, it's everything. It's breathing, it's gasping, it's crying, it's emoting, you know? And, and then it's, it's also the performance of the dialogue. Well, I think it's very doable, uh, but where do we start? Let's start with the basics. Let's go to score one. So we have our boom poles. How actually should we be holding them so that we don't hurt ourselves? That's a really good question because boom operating can be very rough on the body. So you've got to approach booming with a little bit of self-preservation in mind. If we're talking about, you know, booming a scene, you don't want to throw out all that weight. Every single rod Every now single one is out. That's the heaviest you can boom. So you always, you always start with your lightest. Okay, little things like that. Now, we've always seen the cliche, the guy on, you know, posting up on the Instagram, like, I'm a boom operator. Yeah. What do you think of this? Is this good? I think you're, you're, you're gonna have back problems, neck problems, and shoulder problems. It's cool on camera, it looks good, but it is not the most efficient way of I mean, doing this. Your eyes are open, you're gonna, you can hyperextend something there, or at least I can with my shoulders, and then you're, you're forcing your, your neck forward. If it feels comfortable to hold in, that's a good position. Mm -hmm. If you start feeling strain, start to think more about how to reposition. And the other thing is, remember, you're a human operating a boom. You're not a C-stand. Okay. So since we're essentially putting a sensor on a pole, we don't want to pick up the actual vibrations of the pole itself. How do we handle handling noise? Handling noise is basically anything that the boom pole picks up that gets translated. And when you touch it, when you move it, the cable inside, if you've got a coily inside and you do a quick move, sometimes the coily can swing and hit the inside of the pole. That's all handling noise. Handling noise comes from the boom operator or the pole in between the microphone and the transmitter. But avoiding handling noise is one, you're gonna have to learn to make those moves. Okay. Learn how to move silently, okay. smoothly. Um, and moving our hands across the pole. Yeah, sometimes your hand sticks to the pole and that when you take it off, that can make noise too and that'll, that'll translate. You don't want that to ruin a take. So if you need to, get some gloves and make sure, you know, test out your gloves, see if they're quiet. I have a pair right here. Don't get white gloves. <laughs> I didn't. This is the boom operator that wears black. <laughs> so we're learning so much today. We're getting some of those deep inside tips. This is why we had Sarah on. So now that I know how to hold the boom pole, how do I actually point this microphone? Uh, Miranda's joined us. She's going to be our actor who is talking to camera. Okay. Well, why don't you drop into where you think you should be? Okay, where I think I should be, should be off to the side from my key light. And I'm gonna drop my pole in, I'm holding it, and 
I think I'm good, right? That's a good start. Now you always, this pole always needs to be level. So get always your back out. Yeah, that okay. you, you start doing this, that's sloppy booming. Okay. Okay. Always now level. Your, your boom mic, so when you think about sound and what you're doing as a boom operator, um, speech comes out of your mouth. So you, you want to have the microphone pointed at the mouth. And think of it as a, a cone, like an old school megaphone kind of shape coming out of the mouth and getting larger and larger as it goes. So you want this to be miking that. In front of them. In front of them. You know, nobody's gonna get anything really from behind your head. Okay. All right, so now you're, you're way off here. You could give me another length. It would be easier you for length. you. another length, okay. Now this is pointed out the window at this yeah, point. So bring, bring this down. <laughs> okay. And let's orient it. And then we'll. And like that. And then put it back up, get it. your back arm up. Okay. That's a pretty good spot. And then other than that, you want to keep in mind um, what your camera operator's frames are. So you want to be out of the shot. And then you also want to keep in mind your lights. So we've got a light right there. It's soft and diffused, casting this way. So, you know, any shadows from the boom mic are going to be thrown this way, behind us. You never want to cast a shadow on your actor's face. Right. Now, once you've got your relative position, this is where you've got to use your ears. You're the boom operator. It's got to sound good. So you've always got to find a sweet spot. And, and there is a spot where, you know, it'll, it'll sound great. Use your ears for that. This, this gets you to the relative area, and then you find where it sounds best. All right, so to demonstrate the difference between on-axis booming and off-axis booming, we'll start with our really bad position here. Miranda, please give us your line. Today for breakfast, I had peanut butter and banana toast. All right, that's not gonna sound good on the boom at all. Let's get into our corrected position and find that sweet spot. And once we're in that sweet spot, use your ears to find it. All right, Miranda, let's... Today for breakfast, I had peanut butter and banana toast. So you should be able to hear the difference in those two. So as the boom operator, you are operating the microphone, the boom mic, all right? And that requires you to cue the mic. And cueing the microphone means pointing it at the person who is speaking, or the thing that is making sound. So let's give us a little, a little scene, and we'll demonstrate this. And uh, Andrew, why don't you start with the first line? Okay. Miranda, I wish you had ordered me breakfast. I'm sorry, but you weren't there. Yes, but I was on the schedule to come in. Okay, I promise I got you next time. Okay, so you can see that um, I was pointing the microphone um, diaphragm port towards the person who was speaking because that's how you're going to pick up the sound. You're not going to be picking up any sound from the back end of the microphone usually. Now give us a little bit of space and we'll see what happens when the scene when they're spread farther apart. So depending upon the shot, this could be one boom or two. This is probably one. If it's one wide, it could be one stick. If it's two singles that are close up, you might want to give it two booms. So on this, Andrew, why don't you start the scene again? Miranda, I wish you'd ordered me breakfast. I'm sorry, but you weren't there. But you knew I was on the schedule to come in. <sighs> okay, I promise I got you next time. So you see, I am moving and rotating the boom pole to cover the distance to get there in time for their lines. Now, depending on the timing of it, I know that you know Miranda might jump her line a little early, so I'm already moving away from Andrew, but still pointing at him, keeping him on X as the mic, and then I swing at the last second. And sometimes I'm leading off of her to come to him. Um, and the other reason to do it that way is that the air movement on the microphone, on the diaphragm, uh, will give you sound that you don't want. It'll, you know, it'll, you'll hear the sound of a microphone moving through air. So if you're moving into the air with the back of the microphone, you're still getting the dialogue and you're not getting the air hits and then you, you chill. Let's go one step further than just learning the cue during the rehearsal. Let's do it at the beginning of the day with some script prep. When you're handed your sides, get out your highlighters and mark up each actor with a separate color. What the colors allow you to do is really get to know your script a lot better. If you have quick lines back and forth, you'll have different colors on your page. Or if you have a page of just one color, you know you don't need the cue at all. Marking up the script like this will allow you to be more confident throughout the day. And on that note, let's go back to Sarah. So while we're moving the boom back and forth, what else do we need to consider on set? Okay, so once you've got 
you know, your actor's lines, you know we're gonna deliver them the performance. The other aspects you've gotta consider are your frame lines. So your camera operators are gonna give you your lenses. Um, you'll know your frame line. You should know them if you wanna check it. You just drop it in there, have them look on the lens and be like, are we clear? Clear. So if it's all black though, and let's say it's black up it's here, black. how do we know though we actually dent? Oh, we got a little super secret. Did you bring it? She could do the, uh, tiniest of slivers. Usually you get the smaller bit and you can just do that around and sometimes in a really dark set, but the camera opera can see that, oh, catches the eye a little bit better. They can be like, oh, you're close, but you're safe or you're in, you need to come up. Or sometimes they have a move and they ask you to give them a little bit of air and you work that all out before you roll. Awesome. Now, most of these techniques we've been talking about are about booming from above, but you will sometimes come into a situation where you need to boom from below. Those situations exist usually when the sound that is offending, say a background noise, is below the actors and you are above in a higher location. Think about like on a rooftop. You wouldn't want to boom from above because you're gonna get all the traffic noise down below. So what you want to do is boom from below and you may not have anything above the actors at all. Another time you have to boom from below is when you have very hard light coming in from above. Usually think about this like a par can in a ceiling. There's no getting around it. You're gonna be casting shadows all over your actor. So what you need to do is come in from below. One thing to think about though, when you are booming from below is frame line. Often booming from above, you only have a small little bit of headroom. But booming from below, you're definitely gonna run into frame line a lot more. So be very conscious of where you place your boom mic. So when we're working a moving shot, is there anything that we as boom operators need to consider, like say, like what we're wearing? Yes. So first off, you know, we, we stand all day. So get yourself a good pair of shoes, a good pair of sneakers with some support and some cushion. You're gonna be standing most likely if you're on stage on concrete for like 12 to 14 hours a day. It takes its toll on its body. You'll see everybody who stands a lot on set has really good pairs of sneakers and don't wear hard soled shoes because obviously you're the boom up, you're gonna be moving with the actors and booming them. You'll be making noise with hard soled shoes. It's never a good look when the sound department makes noise. So you say we're moving with the actors. Is there a special way we need to walk on set. I think what you're asking for is we were doing a little walk and talk there. I, when I walk backwards or stuff, I tend to find that a grapevine walk, grapevine is, uh, is the over behind move. So you'll just be kind of walking that way and that way you don't kind of trip over yourself and you can, you can just kind of wrap around. Whereas if you were doing this, you were trying to walk backwards like that, it's really, you don't move well that way. And you also make a lot more noise. Okay. Um, also when you're doing this, you're on the balls of your feet, much quieter moving quickly or slowly or whatnot. So learn how to do that quietly. Uh, don't wear like jangly chain bracelets and stuff. If you tend to have rings and they bang against the boom pole, wear some gloves. You know, just, just be aware of what you are doing as a boom operator that might make noise and then fix it. Okay. So for the more complicated things where we're having to choreograph with the steady cam operator or handheld camera operator, is, do we need a spotter? They have spotters? Well, yeah, camera's pretty much always gonna have a spotter, a, a grip behind, keep them safe and, and help them manage all the things. Boom operators do not always get a spotter. You don't always need one. So during the rehearsal, you will discover whether or not you need a spotter. On something like this, it's fairly wide open. You know, we, we, we show the movie, you're coming back here and you're coming there. This is all pretty clear. Um, if it was a set where there were piles of things and clusters behind you, piles of books or something you had to navigate, that's when I would ask for a spotter. If there's something with uneven terrain where you're going from a high to a low, I might want somebody to spot me there so I put my foot in the right place and don't fall off. Or if I'm gonna be right on the edge of a beam, you know, maybe a raised platform or something, and I'm really close to the edge, I might be like, hey, can I get a spotter here so I don't fall off the edge? Makes sense. You know. Well, I think I figured everything out. All I needed was this little 20 minute video and I am good to go. <laughs> I mean, I think tomorrow's shoot is gonna go wonderfully. It's gonna be. Uh, not so fast, Grasshopper. You've got a few more things to learn. Follow me to the gym. The gym? Come on. Here, goes up. Come on, I want, you want to be a boom operator.
So Andrew, we talked about sound coming out of the mouth, getting the microphone in the right position mm -hmm. on cueing. This is a great visual aid to help you get this in your physical memory. We put a little flashlight on here and you can uh, get a visual sense. You want to have it on the mouth as you come out and you always want to keep that there. So, cause you know, if, if he starts talking in that direction, you want need to be there with the boom. So yeah, that is the pickup pattern of this microphone in length. Yes. So let's try this out. Okay, so I've got him right there. We're gonna walk with him. He's walking, he's walking away. Boom, boom mics are very important could, with mines. Yeah, <laughs> I could see where this could really come like in real handy as a way of getting much better. Like, once you visually see it, it's so much easier to just go, oh, I get this. And this remember, makes sense. the key thing is don't, don't count on it with your eyes, but this is a good way to get practice to get the, the idea of where you're supposed to be. The end of the day, always be listening because at the end of the day, the microphone goes where it sounds the best. Right. So even though this might look, hey, that sounds great there, but it sounds better right here, you go where it sounds better always. Okay. Cut. What I want you to do is I'm gonna walk around here, I've got my fingers, and I want you to have the boom follow right overhead and always be in that position where you're on axis in the sweet spot no matter what I do. Okay. So, follow me. I'm up, parallel, boom. Good? Good. Well, here we go. So I'm just walking. I can right. definitely see that pain dividends if you do that enough. That will make you better. Key thing is to get it in your physical memory so you get an idea of where the microphone is supposed to be, where the sweet spot usually is. And then when you're working with headphones, which you should always be doing, key thing is drop it in there and then you find where it sounds the best and that's where you boom from. Boom the end, boom the end. Come on, get me that in. Get the two out, get the cup away. Throw up my fist. When you see the palm, I want you to practice your cueing and mic my palm. Ready? Okay. And be prepared, actors. I know there's a script, but sometimes they ad lib. Okay. You got an overlap. What do you do? You gotta gotta feather it. Give yourself a little space. Mm-hmm. Come back, back and little. you got a little bit more of a spread on your pickup to cue when they start talking at the same time. I can see where memorizing your sides and watching the rehearsal definitely come in handy with the cueing because it's, it's a lot of work. It's a lot of work. And that drill will definitely get you a lot better and memorizing scripts, reading scripts in your, you know, part time, you know, when you have a little free time on the side, just read the script, figure out how they're written so you can get good at memorizing and reading them. And even then, be prepared for the actors to throw the script out the window and ad lib, and then you've got to get that. There you go. So. As you can see, booming is a very physical activity. Your body is one of your tools, so you need to stay in a good shape situation throughout the whole day. That means taking stretches, taking breaks, taking water breaks so your muscles don't cramp up on you, and really treating yourself to make sure that you aren't straining your body in a way that's gonna permanently hurt you. The last thing you need to do is get hurt on the job, take care of yourself throughout the day, and you will have a great time being a boom operator. And with all of that, let's go back to the gym. Well, I think I am finally ready for tomorrow. I want to thank you, Sarah, for stopping by and giving me this workout and drills and filling my head full of knowledge. You got it, man. Any way that I can help, I'm always happy to. So I think you're going to do great. Take all the, those tips and tricks and uh, you know, just go out there and keep doing it and practice. And the more you do it, the better you get.